Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Sunday, September 17, 2023, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. How do you, how do you know if you're a spiritual being or not? What are some of the things that you would recognize in yourself that would identify you in a way as a spiritual being? Well, we are all spiritual explorers of life, manifesting a vast array of unique experiences that fit together like perfect puzzle pieces of a grand mosaic. When we live in a state, we're living in a state of God realization, we can see a spiritual light all around everyone. We feel it within everyone. Okay, only in the event that you are living in a state of God realization. You can see a spiritual light around everyone. Feel it within everyone and sense how it is infinitely emanating from the essence of who we are. There is a natural relaxation of the ego's constant searching, but they're out there, right? Always out there. And it's always the ego's constant searching for something out there, for something to satisfy us and to take us away from our suffering. We, you ever notice that sometimes you'll do things uh, that you feel will take you away from worries, stresses, fears, anxiety, suffering? Maybe if I do this, then I'll forget about this. When we suddenly let go of our habit of constantly satisfying the ego's every wish, need, and demand, we create a space in our life to access a higher state of consciousness. This occurs naturally and we can easily quiet the mind and relax into the deepest depth of our consciousness where we taste the nectar of our own soul. The ego has a grip on all of us, certain degrees, I don't believe any of us are exempt from it completely. And this ego is always, it's, it's very persistent and ignorant. Right? It's not really educated. It often acts like a moth circling a flame. It is helplessly drawn to the light and does not realize that the light is within. Yet when it gathers the courage to dive directly into the light, it is for a moment destroyed. And what remains is a flash of understanding that this sacred light is always on and radiating from within us. All journeys are outward journeys. There's no inward journey. How can you journey inward? You're already there. There's no point in going. Oh, so. Information is always coming into us, right? The information is compiled of all the gods in all physical forms, in all forms, experiencing throughout this universe and beyond. That's where it is. That, you could say, the great spirit is all of us. And imagine that, trillions of gods throughout this universe and all the connecting universes and beyond. That's where all these downloads of information come from. Now, when you look at the enlightened mind, like being, They know without any doubt that anything is possible. With, not the, with the, no doubt 
not even a smidgen of doubt. An enlightened being knows without any doubt that anything. Now the ego mind will say, oh, no, it's not. Don't listen to that. Follow me. There's a deep knowing and feeling of the infiniteness of all things. Enlightened beings live in this infinite spiritual truth simply because they're constantly seeing, feeling, and knowing their infinite spiritual nature. They know they're the God. There isn't doubt about it. They don't run around telling people, this would be through the ego mind, that they are the God. Now this profound state of spiritual clarity allows them to intimately understand the infinite quantum field of energy, information, and the consciousness that binds this entire universe together. There is 100% certainty in the mind of an enlightened being as they cannot rightfully entertain the vibrations of fear, doubt, and disbelief. They are not capable. They cannot rightfully entertain the vibrations of fear, doubt, and disbelief. Enlightened beings understand that everything and everyone has different vibrations of energy that operate at higher and lower frequencies. They are also aware that by diving deeper down, we will find that everyone radiates from the one source of divine, unified God consciousness. This holistic viewpoint allows any enlightened being to know that anything is possible. This understanding opens the door to manifest effortlessly. Their mind is so expansive and brimming with unlimited possibilities that they find it easy to direct the flow of thought and energy toward visualizing any desired outcome. An enlightened being knows that everything and everyone, including themselves, is a living, breathing embodiment of God. A living, breathing embodiment of God. And let them know their body is the body of God. They feel the infinite source of intelligence is all around them and pouring through their mind at all times. This clear understanding of life allows them to have deep eternity for every person they meet, knowing everyone is respect of God. They understand that if you cannot see God in all, you cannot know God at all. Now, oftentimes, because we're, a lot of us are percolating in the ego mind, we have all kinds of things when we look at others, interact with others. We don't even need to know them, but comments and judgments and attitudes and do you look at everybody, right? without a question of a doubt that their body is the body of God. And we're not talking about the physical body. We're talking about the God within them. Do you feel the infinite source of intelligence is all around you, pouring through your mind at all times? This is a very clear understanding of life which allows them to have deep, eternal love for every person they meet, knowing everyone is an aspect of God. They understand that if you cannot see God in all, you cannot know God in all, at all. There is a deep, sensual embodiment of the oneness of all things. 
And this radiates through, your, through their being, creating immense spiritual clarity. Enlightened beings are open to exploring every experience that life brings them. Yet, they know the divinity would never lead them astray. There is a deeply intimate connection between their mind, ego, and physical body. An enlightened being radiates deep eternal love, acceptance, and appreciation everywhere they go. The heart of an enlightened being is so deeply immersed in God that deep eternal love pours out through their eyes and their words. They have fully surrendered to their connection with divinity. This channeling of higher energy pours through their body like a flute playing heavenly healing music. An enlightened being does not even need to speak to radiate the love they feel inside. The frequency their body releases is so palpable that you can feel the tension in your body melt as soon as you're within the energetic radius of their heart chakra. There is only the vibrations of joy, gratitude, and appreciation radiating from their body. So anyone sitting in their presence will instantly feel lighter, happier, more liberated just being in the same room. The pure presence, actions, deeds, words of a truly enlightened being will only point you back to God. There is nothing trivial or coincidental in what they do. They do not see your ego as something that needs fixing or healing. Enlightened beings know that it's a necessary element to have a deeply separated sense of self when one is ready to relinquish that they have the opposite experience. Enlightened beings do not rely on the mind for knowledge or liberation. An enlightened being is constantly feeling unified with the divine intelligence that exists within all things. They know that the ego-based mind is limited and unreliable. An enlightened being will only go to the great spiritual source within them for understanding truth and spiritual clarity. Whenever an enlightened being has a question, they simply open their mind up to receive the answer from divine intelligence Immediately, they can access the highest states of consciousness that contain the answers they need. Enlightened beings are so deeply connected with their subconscious mind because they've spent many hours steeped in meditation and creating an intimate connection with themselves. They can easily and effortlessly tap into the Akashic Records, the Grand Library, to retrieve any information needed. They're to their understanding of anything or anyone. An enlightened being has released their identification of being separate from God and thus has access to the highest intelligence and clarity in this entire universe. An enlightened being lives in a conscious state of God-like awareness that's free from the fear-based, limiting patterns of the perpetual chattering mind. The deeply liberated mind and open heart of an is actually something scientifically duplicatable. Every single one of these evolved beings has gone through the deepest levels of purification. They've spent at least 30 to 45 days cleansing all the toxins from their physical body. And this creates new pathways in the mind, clearly see through the complex matrix of reality. 
from this purified physical state, it's extremely easy to have a quiet, clear, and centered mind. The practice of meditation happens effortlessly and naturally. Your heart takes over the head, and with each new day, you dive even deeper into your divine presence by not identifying with any layers of ego. From this crystal clear internal state, your consciousness naturally merges with the highest spiritual reality. Inside the heart of an enlightened being, there is no longer a feeling of separateness from God because your awareness is perpetually on God and redirected inside yourself into the highest spiritual source of divinity. This connection to feeling oneness with God heals the ancient karmic patterns and negative belief systems that had previously caused relentless suffering in their life. All enlightened beings were once asleep and not self-realized. Their enlightenment is a perpetual awakening process caused by the transcendence of maya, which is illusions of the mind. If the ego of your typical human being is as wide as your head, the ego of an enlightened being is like the width of one strand of your hair. They need to continue to carry around, yet they cannot identify with it. They know their ego is the necessary framework that allows them to exist in a body in the 3D dimension of space and time. An enlightened being is deeply surrendered to their path of perpetual spiritual awakening. They embody the deeper knowing we are all connected with this multidimensional omnipresent God source that exists within everything. All enlightened beings once asleep, were once asleep, okay, this is important, and not self-realized. Their enlightenment is a perpetual awakening process caused by the transcendence of maya, which means illusions of the mind. An enlightened being is deeply surrendered to their path of perpetual spiritual awakening. They embody the deeper knowing we are all connected with this multidimensional omnipresent God source that exists within everything. They are in a state of perpetual liberation from their ego, constantly seeking or seeing it as an illusion. So there is no motivation to hold any judgment of themselves Enlightened beings are perpetually open to life, welcoming everything including the deeper, darker layers of negativity or delusion. They know that welcoming the darkness is what allows them to expand deeper into the light. The comparison of dark and light is needed in this third dimensional world to have any kind of human experience. The ego is needed for the experience of letting go of all thoughts, feelings of separation, and transcending old limitations of the mind in order to realize enlightened beings are perpetually open to life, welcoming everything, including the deeper and darker layers of negativity, delusion. They know that welcoming the darkness is what allows them to expand deeper into the light. We have to have, we need the comparison of dark and light in this third dimensional world to have any kind of human experience. The ego is needed for the experience of letting go of all thoughts, feelings of separation and transcending old limitations of the mind in order to realize we are one unified being. An enlightened being never tries to achieve anything. The forever deepening experience of merging with the God source is so fulfilling 
that there is no longer any egoic desire to achieve any physical goals or reach for a higher state of spiritual realization. We know we have arrived at the source of God and the experience is quite obvious. Enlightened beings are always surrendering their ego to the God source, which feels like lifetimes of joy and laughter and fulfillment that anyone could ever yearn to experience. There are submer they are submerged fully in the infinite multidimensional universe that is unfolding inside of them and all around them. So there are no worldly desires that can tantalize them. An enlightened being is not living in the future or the past. They are busy being here now, fully absorbed in, all, in, in the all-powerful, all-loving divine consciousness that's made of the purest light. There is no more time for believing in the lies of separation that the rest of this world is entertaining. They seem beyond the driven ego and understand how every human being is a fulfilled embodiment of the one omnipresent self. From this profound awareness, enlightened beings exist in a state of list, a state list of bliss and peace Time, wherever they go and with whomever they are with. Whatever enlightened beings do in this life, they approach it as a way to meet God. They are unquestionably their minds, emotions, physical bodies, whereas unconscious beings will behave like slaves to their ego desires and drama. One of the greatest questions that one asks of them, with themselves, what are the steps to becoming enlightened? What are, the, what are the essential steps to it? And this is the greatest question every human being needs to ask themselves and ponder first thing every morning. What can you do or not do today so that you spiritually wake up and become liber liberated from your ego. And for starters, cleanse the body for the 45 days. Spend the majority of bringing the mind into a calm, peaceful stillness. The practice of being still, silent, and solitary is contradictory to the ego's relentless patterns and habits. When the body is fully pure, you will discover it's much easier to find peace and true spiritual clarity. Watch the mind from a distance and act as if you are a hollow flute that is being breathed by God. Practice relaxing into your perpetual center and surrendering to whatever is inside you. Inside your heart is pure bliss. Yet you may need to relax through many layers of shields and emotional wounding to get there. God abides in the center of your being, your heart, not in your head. So you must choose to calm and center the mind back into the heart to find God. This calmness feels like an infinite river of peace flowing through your heart and brings elation to your whole being. In this deeply relaxed state, the ego is no longer wanting anything. This freedom from wanting is what ignites the spiritual awareness that the source of God and your highest consciousness is always here within you. This is the evolution, spiritual evolution of this civilization.
And as you can tell, it's far from where the majority of us are at in this very now moment. You see, because we choose. This isn't something that is forced upon one self. This is something that you invite, that you embrace fully. Not, not half-ass, but fully. You want to. You're motivated to. You're, you believe that you're ready for it. And it is a process that we all go through. And it isn't about making mistakes. It isn't about right or wrong. It isn't about doing, doing it the right way. It's about you embracing who and what you are. Along the way, there are steps to do that. And the first one, as you can already tell, or surmise, is focusing on the now, focusing on the breath, being in the now. Not yesterday or tomorrow. We've done that. We've been there, done that so many times, I guarantee we probably can't count how many times we've been there. So have you ever been in, in this life where you've gotten to a point with yourself and you say, it's time to move on? Have you ever done that? You get this feeling. It's not in the head. It's not a forelearning feeling. It's a good feeling. It's a bright feeling. It's highly energetic. It comes in and you just, you all of a sudden say, it's time to move on. I have been here long enough. So it is time for me to move on. And I believe that more and more of us are doing this, whether subconsciously, consciously, or unconsciously, and moving into the now. Years ago, this was probably a silly thing when you would say to people that you're in the now. But I don't believe it's that way anymore. I believe that it's a lot of people on this planet, they don't know how, and I know this sounds silly, but they don't know how to do that. It's pretty regular, whatever that is, that we get in the habit, right, of the ego mind, and we become blinded by our true identity, our true selves. We don't know. You have like a vision or you see where everybody on the planet has no name. No name. Because we all know that we are part of each other and the one, which makes up everyone. So we don't have a name. And we don't miss the name. Because we're one. We're God. What's your name? I don't have a name. My name is God. You want a name? Give me a name. My name is God. I am the kingdom of God within this body. I am the heaven. I am all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. This isn't stated in an egotistical way. This is stated in a loving, nurturing way. The one self. It isn't boisterous. It is a fact. This is when we talk about where we literally burn through, melt through, all of the preconceived notions and ideas that the ego mind has conjured up through our lifetime, all of the, the misdirection, misguidance from other people's programming thoughts, all of this stuff. And we navigate it. We literally navigate it. Now, some of us, we lose sight of what's ahead in the moment. It's easy to do. Or float off. It's not like we're intentionally floating off because the ego mind takes us there. 
In an enlightened state, you don't float off. You just don't. Ego mind tries, but you already know that the ego mind is you out of the now. And you, of course, know through your heart mind that you have no intention of moving out of the now. After a while, the ego gets this message, and it ceases. So we're literally, we, we have an ego mind, which is in, both are illusions, to help us learn about who and what we are. So you can see it's kind of like an obstacle course. You're running on track field and you say, look at that obstacle ahead of me. That's a, that's a pretty, it's pretty high. I wonder if I could vault it, jump over it, right? And you have doubt and fear, but you're running, and it's getting closer. And it's a hurdle. That's why they call them hurdles. And so you're running, and you don't know if you're going to be able to get over that hurdle. But then you say to yourself, I have total faith in the universe and the God that I am. And you're able to jump over that hurdle. And then the next one and the next one. But it's the apprehension through the ego mind that you experience. Okay. The ego mind kicks in and says, oh, am I going to trip? You know, if I, just, if I just barely touch it with my foot, I, I, I could fall down, wipe out. And that's the doubt and the fear and everything that comes with the ego mind. In an enlightened being, it's a sense. You just do it. And when you identify something as a problem, you would automa automatically know that you already have the solution. That the God that you are already has a solution. And many people experience a no way out scenario. Right? What is that? It means that you have a problem and you don't believe that there's any way out of it. Why would there be a way out of it? You face the problem and a solution surfaces. And you ever had anybody say, well, that wasn't that hard now, was it? All that worry, stressing, and fearing was for naught. And look at the outcome. Because most of the time, that's what happens. We worry, stress, and fear about things for the ego mind. And then I bet you dollars to donuts that you get to the point where you say, that wasn't that tough. I thought it was going to be insurmountable. When we recognize for ourselves, that we are not our thoughts. So many of us believe that we are our thoughts because we're tricked into believing that they came from us. And they didn't. But that's how tricky and slick the ego mind is. Then you say to yourself, who or what is watching these thoughts? This conscious witness is a pointer to who we really are. The so-called whirling dust storms of ideas may be distracting us from hearing the divine hum of our innermost being. But keep watching the watcher and the dust will settle. To some that may be confusing, but when you step, when you leave the mind and the ego alone, and you're on, in the now and focused on your breath, you're able to see and watch
And you're watching from the most inner core of your divine being, the God that you are, is watching the ego mind. Not judging it. But then you'll notice that the dust will settle. And the air around will be clear. When we hear, when we hear the divine hum of our innermost being, this is when we keep watching the watcher and the dust settles. I'll join you in a meditation and I'll return to close this out.
take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Be free from your bad habits. You already know which habits are healthy and which ones are hurtful. So why do you continue to do those things that sabotage your energy and consciousness? How quickly and easily we can stop doing a destructive habit is a good measure of how much self-love and awareness one has. It's all about bringing more awareness and less judgment to these actions and habits. Those bad habits that you need to let go of will naturally fall away. When you stop the mind chatter, realize the sweet, lovable, divine being you truly are. By being consistently kind and repeatedly gentle with yourself, is far the fastest track to release any sabotaging pattern. Always be gentle with, and very soon you will discover the experience of absolute freedom. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and following morning. You will return here Monday, September 18, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern. Continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, eternal gratitude at all times, no matter what's happening within or without.